Hello and welcome to this 40 OS 5 video. In this video, you'll learn how to set up SSL VPN access for remote users on your 40 gig unit running 40 OS 5. Both web and tunnel mode will be covered. Let's start by reviewing a topology of a typical 40 gig protected network. The internal port of the 40 gig is connected to the internal work network, which in this example consists of two subnets. The WAN port of the FortiGate is connected to the internet. Remote users wishing to connect to the work network from the internet can do so by connecting to the FortiGate securely over SSL VPN. Once connected and authenticated, FortiGate will grant the remote user access to the work network. We'll be going through the following steps to set up SSL VPN access. Create firewall addresses and the remote users. Configuring the SSL VPN portal and creating a firewall policy for the SSL VPN portal. On the client side, we'll be going through the setup required for both the web mode and tunnel mode. Now, let's take a closer look at each of the SSL VPN configuration steps. Begin by logging into the FortiGate and navigating to Firewall Objects, Address, Address. From here, We'll create the two address ranges of our work network. Click Create New and enter the details of the 192.168.2 subnet, including a unique name and the subnet IP range information. Click OK to save this new address. Click Create New again to enter the details of the 172.168.78 subnet. With both addresses created, we like to create a new group for these addresses. Navigate to Address, Group, and create a new group called Work Network. We can select as its members both addresses we just created. Click OK to save this new group. Navigating back to Address, Address, we can see in addition to the two addresses we created, there is a predefined address named SSL VPN Tunnel ADDR1. This address defines a range of IP addresses that would be assigned to remote clients. We will use the default range shown, so remote clients will be assigned an address from 10, 212, 134, 200 to 210. Our next step is to add the remote SSL VPN users. To do so, Navigate to User and Device, User, User Definition. Click Create New and enter details of the first SSL VPN user, including the username, password, as well as any other optional settings. Click OK to save this user. We'd like to add one more user, so we'll click Create New again to enter details of the second user. With the users added, We'd like to create a new user group for these users. Navigate to User, User Group, and click Create New. We'll name this new user group SSL VPN Users, and we'll move our new users from the available users list to the members list, so they're part of this new group. Click OK to save this new user group. In addition to manually adding individual users, SSL VPN access can also be granted to users of a remote authentication server, such as an Active Directory server. To do so, we'll have to configure the Active Directory server first, and then add it to the group we just created for remote authentication. Navigate to User and Device, Authentication, LDAP Server, and click Create New to add the Active Directory server. The name of our server is Windows AD Server, in server name IP, we enter the IP address of our server. Server port and common name identifier fields will be left as they are. In the distinguished name field, we enter the base distinguished name for the server. FortiGate passes this information unchanged to the server. In bind type, select regular. In user DN, 
enter the administrator's distinguished name. In password, enter the administrator's password. With all fields completed, we can test our connection to the server. Our test was successful. Select OK to save this new Active Directory server. We now have our Active Directory server. In order to grant SSL VPN access to the users of this server, we'll have to add it to the group we created for remote authentication. To do so, navigate to User and Device, User, User Group, and select SSL VPN Users. Under Remote Authentication Servers, select Add, and select our Windows AD server. Click OK to add the server to this group. With the Active Directory server added to the SSL VPN Users group, FortiGate will not only check specified users in the group, but will also query the Remote Active Directory server for remote user authentication. With our addresses and users created, we're now ready to configure the SSL VPN portal. Navigate to VPN SSL Portal to edit the default SSL VPN portal. The portal message, theme, and page layout can all be changed. Tunnel mode is enabled by default. Split tunneling is selected so that the SSL VPN carries only the traffic for the internal network behind the FortiGate unit. The remote user's other traffic follows its normal route. IP pools defines the IP address range assigned to users when connecting to the portal. We'll use the default SSL VPN Tunnel ADDR1 pool. Available client options include Save Password, Auto Connect, and Always Up. We'll enable the first two options. Web mode is enabled by default. All supported applications are enabled by default as well. Please note SSL VPN web mode only supports traffic from these applications. All other application traffic will be dropped. Tunnel mode should be used if traffic from other applications is to be sent over SSL VPN. Continuing with web mode options, we see session info, connection tool, and for the client download are all included by default. By selecting Include for the client download, an option will be displayed for remote users to download FortiClient software from the portal page. Bookmarks are also included by default. To add a new bookmark, select Create New. Enter the category, name, and location of the new bookmark. Ensure the type and SSO settings are correct, and click OK to save this new bookmark. With the SSL VPN portal configuration completed, Click Apply to save and apply the changes. We can also click View Portal to preview how the SSL VPN portal will look to the remote user. Our last step in setting up the FortiGate for SSL VPN access is to create a new firewall policy. We need an SSL VPN security policy connecting the WAN1 and internal interfaces so the WAN1 interface will start listening for SSL VPN connections. This policy will authenticate remote users and enable them to access the SSL VPN web portal. Navigate to Policy, Policy, Policy to create a new VPN policy. Subtype SSL VPN. Set the incoming interface to WAN1, which is the FortiGate interface connected to the internet and will be listening for VPN connections. Set the remote address to All and the local interface to internal. This interface is connected to our internal work subnets and will be accessible to remote users. Set the local protected subnet to work network, which we created in step one. As we enabled split tunneling in the portal page, remote users will only be able to access subnets defined in work network via the tunnel. Traffic to other destinations will not be sent over the tunnel. Next, we'll need to create a new authentication rule. Under Configure SSL VPN Authentication Rules, click Create New. For this new authentication rule, set the group to SSL VPN Users, which was created in Step 2. Optionally, you can add additional users here. Set the schedule to Always, 
and the SSL VPN portal to full access, which was configured in step 3. We can optionally turn on UTM security profiles. In this case, we will turn on antivirus. Click OK to save this new rule. Click OK to save this SSL VPN policy. Our FortiGate is now set up for SSL VPN access. Now that our FortiGate is configured for SSL VPN access, let's take a look at how remote users will be connecting over SSL VPN. We'll start with web mode. To connect to SSL VPN in web mode, a remote user simply enters the IP address of the SSL VPN portal in a browser window. In our case, this is the IP address of the WAN1 interface of our FortiGate. Username and password are required to log into the SSL VPN portal. Once authenticated, the user is connected to the portal. We can see the portal is as we configured on the FortiGate, including session information, connection tool, and FortiClient download widgets. The bookmark we created for the mail server is available in the server's widget. The user can add additional bookmarks by clicking Add, completing the name, type, location fields, and clicking OK to add additional bookmarks. To connect to a bookmark server, a user simply clicks on the bookmark, a new window will open. After entering required credentials, the user will be connected to the server. Various connection tools are available in the connection tool widget and can be selected from the drop-down list next to type. We'll select the ping tool, enter the host IP address, and click Go. We can see our ping was successful. We'll now see how the remote client connects to the SSL VPN tunnel in tunnel mode, which establishes a connection to the remote protected network that any application can use. To connect via tunnel mode, we'll need to download the tunnel mode client from the web portal. After logging into the portal, locate the tunnel mode widget and click the link to download and install the tunnel mode client. Follow the prompts to go through the installation process. After installation, restart the browser to load the client. Logging back into the portal, we'll now be able to connect and disconnect to the SSL VPN from the tunnel mode widget. Before we connect, Let's attempt to ping one of the servers on the internal work network. From a command prompt window, we'll attempt to ping 192.168.2.14, which is an address within one of the subnets on our internal work network. As to be expected, our ping was not successful. Entering IP config, we see currently there is one address, and it's assigned to the local interface. Enter route print to check the routing table. There are no entries for the subnets in the internal work network. Let's now see what happens when we connect via tunnel mode. From the tunnel mode widget, click connect. Link status changes to up, and we've connected to the server. From the command prompt window, enter ipconfig again. This time, we see the SSL VPN interface is up, and an address 10.212.134.200 has been assigned from the SSL VPN address pool. Entering route print again, we can see routes have been added to both subnets of the work network. Let's try to ping the same IP address on the internal work network, 192.168.2.14. This time, since we're connected over SSL VPN, our ping was successful. Alternatively, remote clients can use FortiClient to connect to SSL VPN via tunnel mode. FortiClient can be downloaded from www.forticlient.com or from the SSL VPN web portal FortiClient download widget. From the widget, click the appropriate FortiClient version link to download and install FortiClient. Once installed, launch FortiClient, select the Remote Access tab, and click Configure VPN. Enter a connection name for this SSL VPN connection. 
set the remote gateway to the IP address of the WAN1 interface on the FortiGate. gate. We'll check Do Not Warn about invalid server certificates. Click OK to save this new connection. Before connecting, we'll attempt to ping one of the servers on the internal network again. From the command prompt, enter ping 192.168.2.14. As expected, our ping was not successful. We now enter the username and password to connect over SSL VPN. An alert message appears in the system tray when the SSL VPN connection is up. From the command prompt window, we enter ipconfig to verify that a new IP address has been assigned for the SSL VPN interface. Route print confirms that new entries have been added for the internal work network subnets. And as expected, our attempt to ping 192.168.2.14, which is from our internal work subnet, is successful. We can monitor SSL VPN connections on the FortiGate by navigating to VPN Monitor SSL VPN Monitor. From this page, we can see details of all current SSL VPN sessions, which at this moment just consists of our FortiClient session. This concludes our SSL VPN setup video. Thank you so much for watching.